What up? So today I'm going to show you five crafts to do if you're quarantined at home. 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 pretty good at social distancing because I just do that naturally but if you're home quarantining and you're you're healthy I guess good on you for taking care of yourself and for not not spreading the virus to anyone else but if you're home and you're sick also thank you for not spreading it but mostly I just wish you a speedy recovery so with this downtime I thought what I would do what I do is five five crafts for quarantine and I try to get all the material from Amazon so I'll put like a link in the description to all this stuff so you guys can stay home. Cool, let's go. So first thing we're gonna make is this little fabric face mask. What you'll need are fabric, elastic ribbon, needle thread, and scissors. So I use two different kinds of fabric, one for the inside, one for the outside, and I'm using this poly cotton fabric for the outside. Ooh, I guess I also used a ruler, pencil, and paper, but you'll wanna draw a rectangle that's 6.5 by 4.5 inches with a little middle section that's 2.75 inches. You're then gonna make a little arc on the top and bottom, then cut out the rectangle, fold in half, and fold in half again, and cut off the corner following the arc, and you'll have a little template that you can then trace onto the fabric and cut out the fabric. Cool. So for the inside fabric, I wanted to make it a little bit bigger so that I could fold over. And I'm using this diaper fabric, because I figured if it's nice enough for a baby's bum, it should be good enough for my face. So yeah, right there I folded it over, saw that it worked, threaded some needle, and then cut, cut it. There we go. And started to just sew. And so this part, it doesn't really need to be a good sewing job, because we're going to end up like unstitching it. This is kind of just to hold it in place. So I just did one side, did the other side, did that last side, and voila. Tied a little knot, cut off the excess. And now to figure out how much of this elastic ribbon to use. I thought maybe 24 would be enough, so I cut that out. And then I needed two little ones for the sides, so cut those two out. And just started to sew them on. Cool. Good job. And I know what you're thinking. Wow, those those don't even look hand sewn. Are the rumors true? Are you actually a sewing machine, Schmood? It's 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 not true. Okay, so now that we have that sewn, we could actually de-stitch those. But I'm just gonna leave them on until I have them all sewn together. So I'm just gonna add that second elastic to that left side, and then oh wait, look at this precious little angel sleeping in all my fabric. All right, so we're gonna sew the bottom down first, and then to figure out how much to leave on the side. I'm going to take the end and measure that out. That's going to be enough for the top, which will leave me slack for both the ends. So then just take half of it and we're going to slow that down. Cool. Looks pretty good. So I just sewed that last piece down and yeah, looks pretty good. Looks strong enough. Unless you're like trying to launch water balloons, I don't think it's going to break. All right. So now I can unstitch that janky first stitch and it's looking good. Good to go. All right, let's try this on. It looks kind of elf ears. 24 inches isn't enough. So here's one with 26 inches. And that's better. But then here's one with 28. And I feel like that's a lot better. And no, I didn't hand stitch two more because that would take forever. I had my sweet mom sell these for me. And she was all professional about it. She had like the pins, she sewed right on the line, cut out enough so that she could just flip it inside out. And yeah, she also like stretched out the elastic a little bit and did the zigzag stitch going down. I'm proud of her sewing. She's proud of my caching ability. Proud mom. That was like perfect. <laughs> so now for part two, we're going to customize these. So what I used was my inkjet printer, iron on sheets, an iron and a white face mask. And if you don't have a fabric face mask, I know of this tutorial you can follow, but it was kind of weird and he like referenced himself as a sewing machine, but yeah, whatever. Next, what I did was take a picture of my dumb face, walk over to my computer, pick my nose, put the picture on the computer, and then make a little template of the face mask, realize that I really need to shave, and then print it out. You just want to make sure that you don't print it on the side with the red lines. Other than that, it just prints out like normal. And it's ready to go. So I took the face mask, put it face down on top of it, taped it down, then flipped it over and started ironing it, it on. Ironing it on. And 
happen. Yeah, I mean, it kind of worked. First thing I realized is that I need to mirror the image, like it needs to be flipped. And then also here on the edges, it kind of got weird because of the elastic. And when I had my mom sew that, I thought that might be a problem, so I had her sew that on the inside. It's gonna be a little more uncomfortable, but I think it's gonna work better. In hindsight, I should have ironed this on before I sewed it. So if you're gonna do like an iron on thing for a face mask, you should do that well before sewing it. So this is the most terrifying thing I've ever made. It's also a bad judgment of character because I'm not happy all the time. So I think I need to make more with, with different emotions. I wanted to do like a little keychain hand sanitizer holder thing, but I didn't have hand sanitizer, so we're gonna do craft number three as a DIY hand sanitizer. Okay. For this, you're gonna need some aloe vera rubbing alcohol, measuring cups, maybe some essential oils, and something to start with. So I'm gonna use this big guy here to mix everything in, and I'm just gonna take two thirds cups of this rubbing alcohol, and I'm gonna use the rest of this tiny aloe vera, so I can use that as the bottle for the hand sanitizer afterwards. But you just add one thirds cup of the aloe vera and mix it up. I thought it'd be nice to add some essential oils. It says don't use directly on your skin, so I only added like seven drops. So hopefully that doesn't go bad. And then just fill her up. I I don't hate it, but also I don't really like the filling of hand sanitizer. So I guess mission accomplished. The eucalyptus was supposed to be like healing. You can kind of smell it. Yeah, I might just be smelling the bottle. So maybe we'll add more. But now that we have this, we can make a little keychain. Okay, let's go. So you'll use two different colors of yarn, a hook, a needle, some scissors, a little doodad for the keychain, and hand sanitizer. So first we need to make a slip knot. Take your tail, go over and under, and pull it through the hole without letting the tail go through. Then stick your hook in there. And with your yarn in the left hand, you're going to go under and over and pull it through the hole. And just keep doing that. Under, over, pull it through, under, over, pull it through, blah, 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 Until you get to your last one. And then you're going to do it one more time. That's going to be your little turnaround point. So to start in the second layer, you have that first yarn crotch. And then the second one. You're going to want to go through the second one. And then under, over, and pull through that first hole. So you have two loops on your hook. And then do that one more time and pull it through both those loops. And then repeat that. So go through pull it through so you have two loops on your hook you pull all the way through and you'll just repeat that until you get to the very end and when you're at the end you're gonna make one more loop that's gonna be your turnaround loop then turn the piece around and you're gonna go through that second crotch again so the last thing that you need to know for this little tutorial is how to change colors and to do that all you're gonna do is go through one like normal pull it through so you have two loops and then introduce your second color and just hooking it on you're gonna pull that through the two loops and then just go on like normal. All right, so with those crochet basics, we can now make a little keychain. So I started like normal, and I count each time I have to go through, and I think this one was 12. And I measure to make sure that's the length I want, it was. So I'm gonna add one, two, three, four, five more, and then turn around, work all my way back, then do one turnaround loop, and then do a normal single crochet, and then do a color change. And then do a one normal single crochet, and then a color change. And then just repeat that. So I'm just doing one normal, then a color change until I have 12. Make sure that's the length I want it is. Do a turnaround loop and keep repeating the pattern. Oh, you're also gonna wanna keep the yarn on one side and that's gonna be the back side. So it won't matter if it looks messy. And you'll keep repeating the pattern so the colors match up on the first two layers. And then on your last stitch, you're gonna actually do a color change. So we have those two loops, you're gonna pull white through do a little turnaround loop and then keep repeating the pattern. So you'll have two layers where they match up and then it will alternate. And that will make a cute little checkerboard pattern. So once I got it done quite a ways, I wanted to check and make sure it fit the bottle. And it looks like it will because I want a little gap so that it will be tight. So I make that last stitch, cut the yarn, pull it through the hole, pull it tight, cut it. And we're just gonna sew that together. So with the yarn and the needle, I just sew it up. So remember the first when my length was 12 and I added that extra little five? The extra little five makes this little doodad that you can put the keychain part on. And then you're just gonna sew that down. And tie it off and you're good. Cut off the excess and then just shove the hand sanitizer in there. Cool. So I think it's kind of cute. I'm a little worried that it's going to fall out. So let's actually make this a little bit tighter. I'm gonna do that by just sewing this spine. 
So I just took the yarn and needle again, a little knot on the left side, and just sewed right along that spine. And it's gonna make it like jut out a little bit, but it should look good. So now it's not going anywhere, except for where you drive, I guess. Um, all right, so craft number five is my favorite one. So uh, let's start doing it, because it takes forever. For this, you're gonna need fabric, needle, scissors, floss, hoop, and a pattern. So first, take your hoop, loosen it, let that inside one drop out. You're then gonna cover that with the fabric. Take the top one, put it over the top, and then tighten that back up. Make sure it's nice and tight, and make sure that the design's gonna fit. Mine's not, so I'm a terrible example, and I had to run to the store and get a bigger one. So I got a bigger one. So on the fabric, if you connect the dots, it makes little squares. And to fill in the squares, you're just gonna do little X's or little crosses. So I mark it on my design where I want to start with the needle and with the knot at the end of my thread, I come from the bottom and pull it up until the knot catches. And I go from the bottom left to the top right of the square. So here's that again, the bottom left to the top right. And then I just went over those from the bottom right to the top left. When I ran out of thread, I split my six strands into two things of three and then did a little square knot. And then just cut off the excess and start it back up like normal. So there's this little X right here, and then there's those two that are right there. I missed that middle one. So I had to cut out some stitches and start over from where it was right. When I was done with that first word, I just counted how many boxes down, and then counted the boxes on the fabric, and started up again. Until I got interrupted. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Ow! Just, no, you gotta just get off, bud. Off. There we go. On the blurred out part of the design, each square was four times the size of the normal one, so I had to figure out what to do there. Also, I made myself a little cheat sheet so I can know what color goes where. I decided I was just gonna do one big X that covers up all four of the squares, and that seemed to work out pretty well. And if I didn't like it, I thought I could always go back and change it, but also I knew I wasn't going to because it takes forever. And done. So I just clean up the back, and I wanted to see what it would look like in that smaller hoop. And yeah. So two things. I'm surprised that the blur effect actually worked. And I'm not surprised on how much I loved cross-stitching. Like, I've done embroidery before and I really enjoyed that. This was a little more mindless, I guess. I was just like following the pattern, so I didn't really have to think a whole lot. And I will have a free download for these patterns if you want them in my shop on my website. If you guys are interested in like how I designed the pattern, I don't know, let me know. I could do a tutorial on that too. It was pretty fun to actually make it at. All I did was search for pictures of 8-bit flowers and cursive, and then like put it together on like a little grid thing. Um, Next video, I'm actually gonna do the part two of these Converse and show you how to make that, so stay tuned for that. And I'm gonna go find a place to hang this. So, cool. Subscribe. And by hang it, I guess I meant lean it up against a fake plant and a ceramic cat. Cool. One day I'll have Drew Scott helped design my bathroom. Ugh.